Have you ever wondered why a lot of these truck drivers are leaving the industry? For various reasons, like it could be too stressful. It could be because you're away from home. You're away from family. Could be that the market crashed. Could be that you're not making any money. Could be a lot of reasons why truck drivers are leaving the industry. Now, a lot of you that's coming in the industry are happy because y'all making money that y'all never seen before, but y'all don't never realize the situations that you would jump into because you're following the path of what somebody else either told you or what you have seen on TikTok. You see these truckers out here doing the damn thing. Those are brand new to the industry that never experience what trucking could or would be about. Guys come in here thinking that they're going to make all who kind of money. Everybody is set on the fact that this trucking industry is where you can make six figures. That might have been the case long time ago, especially during the pandemic. All of you guys that came in during the pandemic, y'all was doing well. But unfortunately for some of you, y'all didn't realize that it was going to crash like it did. Now you guys are stuck with exuberant truck payments, trailer payments, brokers that's not giving you the kind of money that you was getting before, shippers and receivers holding you up, messing you up on your time and stuff like that. Y'all didn't realize that because y'all didn't see it. Y'all didn't anticipate it, right? Let's talk about some of the reasons why truck drivers are deciding to hang up the keys. Now, of course, many of this is my own opinion. And if you have a thought about why you yourself are thinking about leaving or why some of the truck drivers that already left, leave it in the comments below. Let's engage about it. I could be wrong in some of my assessments. Hear the music. So usually a lot of you guys think that trucking is this get rich quick scheme. You guys thinking about how much you can make without even knowing about the industry. Well, as soon as I get into trucking, I'm going to hit six figures. No, it's not always the case. Think about this. When you get into the trucking industry, your first year going to be somewhere around 45 to 50 k. Now y'all thinking, man, that's too low. If I'm going to make 45 or 50 K, I might as well just go to McDonald's and make that go to Amazon and make that. Yeah, that's true. A lot less stress and you're home every day. But with trucking, you're not going to make six figures on your on your first come out. You got to go through training. You got to go getting your license first. And the first year you're going to get with a company that's just not going to care about you. They claim that they care about you now. Don't, don't get me wrong. They claim that they care about you. But nine times out of 10, you're not going to make that kind of money because you got to work your way up. You're going to get with a company that's going to treat you bad. That's not going to get you the miles. And they're going to see what they can do with you before they even maybe give you an ounce. But yeah, think about this. It's, it's gonna be about 45 to 50K when you come in. And if you think, if you think that sounds decent, okay, and, and you wanna continue, think about this, right? Realize that you have no kitchen, no bathroom, and you're in a cramped place to sleep. Once you get out of this driver's seat, you're in the, you're in the bunk. From the bunk, back to the driver's seat. Now, a lot of you guys, y'all could cook, y'all bring y'all utensils, y'all bring the, the the microwave, the, the the stove, the oven. I seen it, I see you. A lot of you guys like to cook on the road because the offerings out here is just not healthy. But you gotta make sure that that truck comes with a refrigerator so you can keep it stocked, right? Some trucks don't even come with that. You gotta make sure that the truck has a power inverter a lot of trucks don't come with that. Some companies even force you to pay for a power inverter. So just think about that. Cramped space, nowhere, no, no way, no how to cook, and definitely no bathroom. You you pretty much have to make all that yourself. Get yourself a little porter potty, get yourself some cooking utensils, and adapt, right? You also have to spend so much more money than a local job. 
You have to do your laundry on the road. You have to eat on the road. And you might have to pay for Wi-Fi to enjoy entertainment. And yes, you're going to have to pay for Wi-Fi. Depending on whether you not have Verizon or T-Mobile, you still have to pay for the hotspot, right? If you get one of those T-Mobile home set up, you still got to pay for it. That's about 50 bucks, 60 bucks a month. And even if you don't have that, going to these truck stops and to pay for their quote unquote garbage premium Wi-Fi that still is garbage, that's about 20, about what, for 24 hours, 15, 20 dollars? So you gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for, you gotta pay for that. If you don't have T-Mobile or Verizon, you know, to watch the TV, to watch the internet or whatever the case. So you're gonna have to spend money on that. Everything is difficult. That could be another reason why you know, the drivers of, of old is leaving because everything is becoming difficult. FMCSA is putting more regulations on truck driving for the drivers that have some bad stuff on their background it's a little bit more difficult for them going to the bathroom could be difficult for you in the winter time you, you you parked in the back you gotta walk all the way up to the front now i know some of you drivers out there complain about us getting out of the truck going in the back and relieving ourselves behind the truck but that's because some of them don't feel like walking all the way up to the to the bathroom some of them probably might have batter bladder problems you, you don't know you could complain about it all you want but if you see a truck driver get out of the truck and go on the side of his truck and relieve himself, it could be a number of reasons, not just because he don't want to go to the bathroom, that he's doing it. But for those that do need to relieve themselves, number one, which is probably easy for a guy, but kind of difficult for a woman. Number two, same thing, might be for easy for a guy to go back there and sit down and cock over and and let and and let it rip out of him take some baby wipes and wipe itself off but that long cold walk to the bathroom at 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 a at a truck stop yeah it's also difficult to use the bathroom at some of these shippers and receivers too hey do you have a bathroom for us nope we got a porta potty outside you go to that porta potty and it smells it's it's having been cleaned hasn't been sanitized but that's what they give us they give us that it don't even have no toilet paper no way to clean your hands everybody and a mama went in there went out went in there went out yeah that that's that's the options at some of these shippers and receivers they don't give you those type of options to take care of yourself when you need to rest when you need a restroom the choices in food is usually overpriced and very unhealthy a hamburger at the loves at one of the restaurants damn near ten dollars a whole meal costs you close to twenty twenty dollars a day now now don't uh, you you gotta at least eat twice a day and this is for those that don't cook on their trucks or don't have no microwaves to warm up their food this is for the guys that that eat breakfast lunch and dinner well probably breakfast skip lunch and then dinner that's still 20 that's 40 dollars a day a day 80 dollars two days 120 you going in let's see for two more days you looking at close to 200 dollars a week 200 dollars a week to eat man so you gotta when you get paid every week you gotta a lot for your weekly consumption of 200 dollars of course if you have family this is probably the number one reason why a lot of truckers especially for females that's leaving the industry is because they are away from their family their kids their loved one now for a guy especially if you're in a relationship or even if you're trying to build a relationship it's going to be a little bit hard for that young lady to accept the fact that you're going to be gone for months on end and only get home maybe once or twice maybe two or three months because some of these trucking companies requires you to be out for two to three weeks at a time yeah we need you to be out we need you to agree listen now keyword agree we need you to agree to be out three to four weeks at a time and then we'll give you two or three days to be at home three to four weeks at a time two to three days to be home 
So if you're a family person and you're family oriented, you like to do family activities, trucking is just not for you. And listen, half the working time that you'd be doing in trucking, and this is probably another reason why they leaving, is that you're not paid for half the work that you do. Get out of the truck, open the doors, that's free. Get inside of the trailer, move stuff around, that's free. Bumping dots, that's free. Getting loaded and unloaded, that's free. Getting, sitting on the side of the road, that's free. Waiting for repairs, that's free. Sitting at a, at a, at a dealership, waiting for more repairs, that's free. Waiting to get dispatch, that's free. All of that is, is free. As long as the truck is not moving, you're not getting paid. You're, you get paid based on the miles that you run. And if you haven't ran that many miles for the week, you're not getting paid. Sometimes you got to fight for the little bit of time that you're idle. Truck is in the shop for maybe like a couple of couple of hours. You're not getting paid for that. They say you get breakdown pay. Okay, how that work? Well, your breakdown pay is just like your layover pay. It has to be 24 hours from the time that you initially broke down. So if you broke down at five o'clock on a Monday, you would get paid five o'clock on a Tuesday, 24 hours, not 18, not 10, not 15, 24 hours from the time that you're broke down. And if you get fixed any time before that, you're not getting paid. So just remember when you're choosing companies, see if they allot for various type of payments because again if you feel like you want to come in here and do this and you want to get paid for everything that you're doing this may not be the industry for you so you guys know i talk about companies i used to drive for in the past my very first company us express it was pretty good spent about two years there but my time there was okay for the most part because i was getting my experience and that's basically what i wanted to do i wanted to get my experience and anything that was thrown at me i pretty much had to swallow it up and take it here go up in the northeast we'll try to find somewhere to get you back down okay okay but no i'm i'm up in the northeast didn't like it but it's it was whatever but dealing with driver managers though, dealing with driver managers could be stressful and it can be very stressful, especially those driver managers that likes to micromanage. Those are the worst. They be sitting there in front of their computers. They're watching you on their, on the Sam Sarah, seeing where you going. And then if you happen to veer off the, the beaten path or, or go and grab some lunch and you sitting there for a little minute, just know they're going to be on the phone. Hey, how come you're not moving? Hey, how come you waking up late? Hey, how come you going down this route? Hey, why are you doing this? Hey, 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 bro, I'm driving. Okay. The load ain't supposed to be there until this time. I would get it there, but no. You always on the phone texting, always on the phone calling, and just all out being the butthole. Let me do the job. Let me do the job. That's it. Give me the load and I will run it. If I have any problems, I will ask. Some companies, I was in the top 10 as far as productivity goes. But did I ever hear a thank you or, or, or good job? Not so often, not so often. In the previous company where I was at, I was at that company for three years and I had my ups and downs, but I had the productivity to get the job done. Did I get any accolades there? No, I, I was told I wasn't going to even make no more money after the money that I, that I got my raise prior. Now you're capped at where you at. You're not going to make no more money with us in the foreseeable future. Did I, did I get, a, did I get bonuses? No, no. Just in 2023 alone, there was a safety, they, they, they safety score went in the trash. Not, not to mention that I was probably part of it. it was a situation that happened to me in, in Florida, but still they had a gang of people that had much worse situations than me. So did we see a bonus at the end of 2023? Nope. Did I see a raise in 2024? Nope, I, I was brought into the office, sat down and said, no, we're not doing no more raises, but we got a new terminal in Texas. 
we got new trucks we got new trailers we got new clients we making all this buku money we're bringing in new drivers but on another side of your neck you're going to tell me yeah we got all that going on but we're just not going to give you no more money am i a part of that success though am i i i thought i was I, myself and my fellow drivers is part of your success if it wasn't for us you wouldn't be in a position to buy more trailers buy more trucks get more drivers you wouldn't even have that terminal in texas well you you probably would because from what i understand you guys was working on that way before i came in and that was three years in the making but still though but still within my three-year time period i was part of the success of the company only to now not to reap the benefits of the company but that is could be a reason why some of the drivers could be leaving the industry lack of good directions from shippers and receivers you get there they 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 treat you bad they treat you like shit. shippers and receivers do that all the time they don't they don't respect you as the driver and they don't respect the time now if the shipper and receiver have issues with keeping the people working there i get it they can be short staff but grocery places are the worst places that you have to pay a lumper fee are the worst they're the worst places to uh, drive to because they don't respect you or your time get there your appointments at five o'clock you get there at about 4 30 you get in the dock and you don't get out of there until five hours later they already unloaded the truck but you can't move because now they got to break down every pallet break down every box and count every commodity that came in couldn't you guys do that while i'm not there the job of getting the stuff off the truck is already done let me go if there's a over if there's an over short call and, and put it on the paperwork and call them and let them know let me go so i can continue to make my money because as long as i'm sitting there while you're you're doing your job i can't do my job so i'm not making no money and last and not least i, I would tend to think this isn't a problem why drivers are leaving but it could be part of the problem is parking parking trying to get parked every day after the 11 hours depending on the, uh, the time of day that you finish parking can't park in walmart no more because truck drivers mess that up can't park in 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 big parking lots that that can't allot for the space for a truck because truck drivers messed it up truckers be parking all over the place when it comes to a truck stop truckers be making parking spaces truckers don't even respect you even when you buy the parking spot and you get there and somebody's in that parking spot you go in there tell the worker hey somebody's in the spot that i paid for they go out there try to get the truck to move but that guy i can't move because i don't have the hours to move then why you parked there in the first place sir because truckers know that they can get away with it because they can use the i'm out of hours trope it could be a real pain you technically not supposed to even drive your full 11 hours unless you're with a company that forces you to drive your 11 hours hey you got a couple of hours left go in and drive it out yo i i need those two hours so technically you're driving nine maybe nine and a half hours because you need those two hours to look for parking even with the previous company i found parking i got there i parked maybe about an hour and a half i get the call hey hey bud we see that you park right now but if you could could you run over to the the shipper or 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 the receiver because this is probably the receiving can you run over to the receiving and see if they can get you unloaded yeah but i'm already parked and and the time that we need to get unloaded is in the morning yeah i i know but they're still open they don't close until such and such time and i feel that we can get over there and try to get unloaded and and hopefully you'll be able to overnight on the on the property now let me tell you how this is messed up for the driver so the driver will drive all the way over there run out of time get stuck in the door or get stuck on the property but they might not unload you until in the morning 
meaning that you won't be able to stay on the property until then. Now what you gonna do? You're out of hours. Oh, don't worry about it. Just punch in PC and just say you're looking for a safe haven. So instead of being parked at where I was parked at, now I gotta go back knowing that the parking spot that I had is gone and knowing that the truck stop where I was at is filled. Now I gotta go all over the place, risk my license, risk getting a, 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 a HOS violation because you wanted me to go over there to see if they will unload me, knowing that they won't do it until the time in the morning. It's a real pain looking for parking. You're in violation looking for parking. And sometimes using that, I'm trying to find a safe haven don't always work. I'm just saying. Depending on the company you work for, will most likely discipline you and probably hit you with a repeated violations that could and would get you fired. But that is probably one of the reasons that could and would be the reason why some of these truck drivers are just up and leaving the industry because they don't want to be bothered no more. They don't want to be bothered no more. But there's a whole bunch of reasons. This is just a few in my opinion again let me know what you guys think in the comments below and let me know if if there's more to the point of why people are leaving the industry all right let me know if you like content like this make sure you hit that like share the content i would greatly appreciate it if you have any stories or topics or anything that you want to get at hit me up lockout men podcast guest at gmail.com or hit the channel number 216-600-2090 until next time everybody if it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road you wouldn't have none of y'all shit this video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver